Turns out that Brunswick Circuit Pro Bowling was released for the Nintendo 64 as well as the PlayStation 1. Given I already covered the PS1 version, I might as well check out this one and see if there's any improvement. Spoiler alert, there really isn't. But that doesn't mean we can't still check it out. After all, I got nothing else in the works right now and could use some filler content. Don't worry, this won't be a Garlic Jr. Saga situation. Just like the PlayStation 1 version, you can make a character. Yet, there's no difference with the amount of customization you have at hand. It's just the same exact thing, except it loads slightly faster, but still has some lengthy loading times during the game. You still can't really make any characters that could represent real world people. It's still very basic and lackluster with the customization of the face presets, the facial hair, the hair, color, your outfit color, and whether or not you wear glasses or not. You can at least, you know, usually still choose do you want to be short, average, or tall, but I still can't really make any people. I can't make myself, I can't make Asm Gold, I can't make Moist Critical, I can't make some ordinary gamers. It really sucks. So let's just hurry up and move on to the modes that this game has to offer. You have exhibition mode returning with the usual 10 frames of simple bowling. They also have the crowd. Yay! Wheel of Fortune. Just what I wanted when I'm trying to focus on bowling. Let's cover the controls while we're here. I hate the crowd. Use the analog stick to pick the direction you're going to throw the ball, but the frame rate makes it feel jarring. Seriously, look at the footage. Doesn't it look a little choppy? It felt choppy when I was playing it, and it looks choppy when I was playing it. And it's not just the editing, it's just how it is. Then you must time your throw and get the black bar and the green for the best outcome with power and accuracy, which is also hard with the frame rate. But man, why is the animations at like 5 frames per second? It's like the characters are moving in the world of GoldenEye 007. Just missing the firefights in the bathroom stalls and rocking soundtrack. Oh, and the big heads cheat. Can't forget that classic cheat code. Skins is where you try to bowl the best and get money for doing so? If you mess up, you're out of the round and just watch? I guess that's how skins works? I don't know. I don't like it and I want to move on. I never understood this mode. I don't like playing this mode. I just mention it because it's in here and I might as well mention every mode possible within the review. Tournament lets you customize the experience by choosing which place to bowl, rid of the qualifying games if you want, and choose how many are participating in said tournament. Then you bowl and try to beat everyone for the prize money, which isn't used for anything and is just a fake reward. Yay! Participation trophies! Oh, and the AI is a bitch. Good luck ever trying to beat them. I tried my darnest and I still failed in the end. Hello darkness, my old friend. My favorite mode is here, Cosmic Bowling, which looks good with the Nintendo 64 version, 
as everything's less jagged. But the crowd is here, and it ruins the mood as per usual. Come on! The game still has bad load times, but they're somewhat better than the PS1 version. Music is good, wish there was more of it, wish it was a little bit louder. Controls are fine, graphics are fine and slightly better than the PS1 version, but the GoldenEye 007 framer animations are a bit jarring to look at. Seriously, why do the characters move like in a rare video game? At the end of the day, Brunswick Circuit Pro Bowling for the Nintendo 64 is just a slightly better in some areas version of the PS1 version. Graphically, it's a bit sharper and less jagged, but the frame rate takes a noticeable dip. Control wise, it's the same, but the frame rate does make it feel less responsive. Honestly, I still rather play the PS1 version of this game, or even better, the sequel on PS1. I do recommend this game, however, but you're better off with the PS1 version of this game. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all later. Well, I found a bowling game worse than the Flintstones Bedrock Bowling. Plus, this is a Nintendo 64 game. Yeah, remember when I last made a review for this thing? That was last year! In July! Well, it's time to get back into this neglected platform with an awful bowling game. This is Super Bowling, developed by Athena LTD in the year 2000. It's also one of the rarest Nintendo 64 games. Not sure why people want it so badly, given it's one of the worst games of all time. Let me explain why. Ah boy, here we go. First thing you'll notice is the awful graphics. Yes, the game is from the year 2000, but that's no excuse when the PS1 was putting out better looking bangers long before this, and even around the same time with Resident Evil 3, Dino Crisis 2, Tomb Raider 3, and Action Bass to name a few. Plus the PlayStation 2, was out the same year with Tekken Tag Tournament and Midnight Club Street Racing. Good God! Oh, and the characters? They look like they're ripped out of that Final Fantasy tech demo for the Nintendo 64 Square Enix made back in the day to condemn the system for being underpowered and still using cartridges. Why are they nightmare fuel inducing? Bad touch! Stranger danger! As for the controls, they're just foul. You can't really control things. You can move the analog stick, which was good only for basically Super Mario 64, but bad for almost everything else, by selecting the direction and throwing position. Then use the A button to throw. Simple enough, right? <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> Wrong! You have to compete with the game's fast moving green bar. Once the gauge fills up, you have to land right smack dab in the middle to get a decent throw. On top of what that, you may be wondering about spin and power. Well, the game does feature that. Use the analog stick to go up and down for power or spin, and left and right for spin or power. Problem is, the Nintendo 64 analog stick, it's not that good at precision. You will always go too far or too low with your spin and power, costing you your throw. Ugh. God, get used to hearing that. That is all you will be hearing the entire fucking time. Fuck. Relax. Because the game sucks oh so much, I'm only going to cover some of the basics this game has to offer before quitting. I just want to be done with this game. I went in with an open mind and just, oh god, 
Am I more bigoted than an Alex Jones fan at this point already? My mind is full of anger and confusion. I make Trumpists look like saints with their tiki torch marches at night. Enough said. This game is just that bad. It'll turn you into a violent monster. Don't. Play. It. Okay. You have open play for those who just want to bowl. So free game, quick bowl, exhibition, etc. and other names. So you just bowl 10 frames and that's it. Which would be a good place to get used to the controls and everything, right? But good luck doing so given this game's awful mechanics and the fact that it's a Nintendo 64 controller. There's team play with two people teaming up to compete against another two person team. Given the Nintendo 64 had natural four player support, there you go. Good luck getting anyone who wanted to play this game with you, let alone actually interact with a human being because you play video games. With the choice of one or two lanes to play at the same time, you just need to bowl the best and hope the other team gets a lower combined score. Simple. Except the controls still keep getting in the damn way. There's a golf mode. Why? What the fuck does golf have to do with bowling? Why taint a good sport with the worst sport ever conceived by humanity? Based. You just bowl and try to do good with the least amount of throws, just like golf with swings. You want to get a hole in one or a strike for the best score? I guess. I don't know how golf works. It's shit. Man. Wow. That that's crazy, isn't it? Oh my god, true? Yeah. True and fucking real. The last mode to cover is challenge mode. Just like every other bowling game, you must get all the pins with a single throw. Each time gets more challenging. Good luck with this game's controls. Try again. You can view characters in a locker room, which is like a gallery or something. But why do I want to see these low polygon anime characters? I don't. This sucks. There's nothing to this game. The graphics suck. There's better looking Nintendo 64 games out there, especially at this time. The gameplay is awful. The camera is nauseating. The resolution makes no sense. Why is the camera so dinky? Why am I only seeing a small portion of the screen? This is god awful. And I just want to be done with the shit game altogether. Does this look unsure to you? At the end of the day, Super Bowling for the Nintendo 64 is a hot steaming piece of shit that should be left to rot on the sidewalk. Don't clean it up. Don't even look at it. It's fugly, and it must decay alone away from human contact. It's not worth playing, and is easily on par. No, it's far worse than the Flintstones Bedrock Bowling was for the PlayStation 1. That game was just boring with nothing to it this is boring with nothing to it with bad camera bad controls bad everything enough said anyways that's it for this video see you all later After finally wrapping up all the PlayStation 1 bowling games it's time to finish off the Nintendo 64 ones as well which, not surprisingly, are in fewer numbers. We only have like three games total, so let's tackle the last one being Milo's Astro Lanes, developed by Player One and published by Crave Entertainment in the year 1998. Oh. This little cartoonish sci-fi bowling game offers a decent selection of content, and keeps things from getting stale quickly, unlike those realistic bowling games, by introducing power-ups and traps on top of a neat soundtrack and charming characters. Let's get this one done and move on to greener pastures, where the buffalo roam, and don't pet that thing that's three shades of brown. Oh, and that's a hint for
for future reviews right there. To begin, we need to select a mode. Since we're alone, we'll play League, as it's the only real mode available without another player. After that, we can select a bowling ball from six options, which is a difficult choice with how neat they all are. Then we can select from six characters to play as, each one with their own personality, but otherwise nothing else is different about them. <laughs> Tricky. Now on to the controls, which are pretty good. In fact, they are some of the best I've experienced in a bowling game so far, and I've reviewed like what, 17 or 18 games so far basically? Wow, I should branch out and do other kinds of games more often at this rate. Anyways, you push the analog stick up, and either keep it straight or push it left or right for a spin, and change the direction, then you press the A button to toss your ball, the B button toggles through any power-ups or traps you have, and the Z button enables them. L and R shoulder buttons are to change the camera, and the D-pad is to move and position your character. Very simple controls and mechanics that work, which is such a breath air. So, after so many mediocre and garbage bowling games. Plus, it's a Nintendo 64 game. Go figure. The Nintendo 64 controller has better controls than a PS1 or PS2 bowling game. Ridiculous. Oh, darn. There are two modes within League mode. You have your standard one on one bowling match and a bonus level. Each lane has its own theme and obstacles. For example, the hyperspace lane has a ramp and a gap for your ball to fall into if you're not careful with your throw or using certain power-ups that can cost you your turn. Venus Vacation has lava coming from the volcano as well. But your greatest threat with Milo's Astro lanes will always be the frame rate. Dear God, is the frame rate just chugging along? Power-ups are a thing in-game. Those colored stars you see, if you touch them with your ball, mm. you can get a power-up slash trip. These range from making your balls huge, splitting your ball in three, or speeding it up. These can either be a blessing or a curse, depending on which lane you're bowling on and the position of your throw. Whoa. Traps, however, are the opposite of beneficial for yourself during your turn, at the least. In fact, these are great little dick moves that you can pull off, and so can your opponents. These range from acid puzzle puddles that will eat away their balls, to throwing a cartoon bomb at them, which blows up their bowling ball. There's even a spring that sends their ball flying all over the place. The bonus levels are playable after you win a cup from a respective lane. Then, you could go back and play a mini game where you have four tries to knock down all the pins. Afterwards, you can replay the normal match. But that's about it for this game content-wise. It's a pretty basic and charming game. 
there's some more stuff, but it's just two more lanes that require tons of grinding by replaying each lane several times and after over one hour, I cannot be bothered to continue. I've seen all this game has to offer. It's a basic fun little bowling game, so on to the other section. If only there were more modes, and if only the frame rate wasn't so horrendous on certain lanes, plus the grind does get tiresome, all these cons do hold the game back from being great. It was fun while it lasted, but after an hour of playing, I couldn't stomach the game anymore. Kind of how I am these days, where I get burnt on a game after a while and don't want to return to it anytime soon. I guess it's part of getting older. Who knows? I did enjoy the music, but couldn't find it online to use for this review, which sucked. But what else is new? An obscure bowling game probably won't be a thing on KH Insider. At the end of the day, Milo's Astro Lanes is a fun little bowling game with some problems. I do recommend the game despite these issues of uh, frame rate, grind, and lack of modes. The charm of its character, style, and theme help it out greatly, on top of its power ups and traps ability to spice up matches to be more challenging or easier. This is also the last bowling game for the Nintendo 64, so get ready for yet another compilation in the future. And hopefully, I'll stop reviewing nothing but bowling games too. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all later. Ooh, tricky!